The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome to another exciting edition of Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, into the breach do we go, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, we're up a little five uh, and a half points on the S&P cash. Um, volume 1.7 billion shares, so fairly light. Very much uh, like Friday. In fact, uh, if you wanted to uh, look at the dollar amount traded on Thursday compared to Friday, uh, Friday was off a third of the of the money that we had on on Thursday. So a pretty huge decline. Looking at numbers so far today, I'm going to say that we're probably running at the rate of Friday light volume and up a little bit out here. So we're probably, especially in a lot of these stocks that are at 52-week highs, I suspect if we look at them today, we're going to see that uh, they're up on very light volume above those uh, previous highs just a little bit. Um, anyway, as where I said, uh, up uh, 5.5 uh, 5 points on the S&P cash, 1.7 billion shares on the NYSC consolidated tape. And uh, we're starting to get back into some news cycles. We'll get into that here today. And uh, a lot more charts, although it's kind of a sleepy Monday in the summer for trading. But uh, as always, we like to kick off the day with a little bit of history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1991, Borland creates a software powerhouse by buying Ashton Tate Corporation for $440 million. Analysts declare that Borland has the dominant position in database software for personal computers. Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates says, My largest concern about price competition comes from Borland. Over the next three years, Borland stock loses three quarters of its value. One of the reasons was Microsoft was buying the best talent it could find anywhere and putting a lot of money uh, building its own compilers and of course uh, working hard to make sure that its suite of uh, Word, Excel and uh, uh, the other office programs to access uh, were doing well and of course this is when they started uh, coming out with suites of software uh, for developing software now known as an IDE, uh, and uh, they, they really kind of got on. I used their IDE known as Visual Studio, and actually you can get it for free, the base version of it. Uh, if you're working with more than one programmer, you have to buy their, uh, you, know, you probably would buy their, uh, what they call their Enterprise Edition, uh, which can be about $2,500 a seat per year. Uh, per uh, individual. So uh, when you look at it, you kind of see that they were at this time playing a little catch up. Borland had a better compiler for creating programs. Many of the programmers used it, but uh, they had already started before 1991 of hiring the, just the best computer uh, side graduates that they could find and really working on making the best compiler uh, for any uh, program writing, and it still is head and shoulders above everything else. They've just released a new major version, the first one in about 10 years um, last year. And it's amazing how good uh, software that writes software can get, but it continues to be very good. Um, I'm using uh, Visual Studio. You can uh, not only use the standard languages with it uh, that uh, Microsoft normally pushes, which is uh, .NET languages and C++, but a variety of other ones. I'm working with Python right now for some machine learning stuff. Um, so uh, for free, it, it uh, is pretty, pretty awesome. 
uh, especially after you get used to it. Like a lot of these big IDEs, it takes a long time. There's a learning curve, but uh, generally at the end, it's worth it. Uh, but uh, what uh, Borland did not see coming was uh, all the development and R&D that Microsoft was rolling back in in 1991. By 1995, um, didn't hear a lot of people talking about using a Borland compiler or a, using any of the uh, the uh, Office software in Ashton Tate, Word, Excel, uh, Access, and uh, some of the other ones had gotten a PowerPoint, had gotten the definitive uh, business case. And uh, if you were anywhere, uh, you were swapping Word documents in 1995, uh, not, not Ashton Tate's Word processor. Uh, anyway, on this day in 1991. Now, what else do we have on Friday? It's kind of quiet, so you didn't see a lot going on. But the U.S. Uh, total rig counts were up another 7 to 763. Horizontal rigs were up an impressive 9 to uh, 657. Uh, if you dug deeper into the report, as I did over the weekend, what you will find out is that a lot of the uh, areas where, especially the shale, where a lot of people thought that the cost to produce was somewhere around $50 a barrel, and therefore it would be shut down, uh, are able to probably make money at uh, in the $40 range now. Uh, because a lot of these things that were at $50, or at least they used to be known at $50, is now opening back up. They wouldn't open these things back up, uh, especially in these shale areas, if they couldn't make any money. If it was a, Maybe it's break even. But uh, a lot of these uh, uh, guys think that they can make money at these prices, which only means that prices will have pressure on them for, yeah, sunk costs, uh, will have pressure on them for some time to come. But uh, they're opening them back up, which is not bullish for crude anytime soon. Uh, my guess is that crude will have a nice pop the first day that we see these oil rigs actually go down. And it will probably be one big day where we see 30 of them close uh, during the week. But there are probably going to be a hint before that happens. Uh, what else is going on? Well, we're heading into earnings season. Now, this Friday, we've got some financials. J.P. Morgan Citigroup, Wells Fargo, PNC Bank. Uh, the non-bank uh, is Infosys. If you're unfamiliar with this company, it's an Indian company that uh, specialized in bringing H-1B visa uh, employees, especially for uh, for uh, uh, tech, you know, uh, well, IT assistance, uh, and mostly was bringing uh, Indian uh, native. How do you say it? I guess it's just Indian um, folks over here for three years who would work for half of what uh, the price that the uh, U.S. Uh, IT person would. And they had to go back after three years. But uh, from Disney to a handful of others, uh, Infosys was instrumental in gaming the H-1B visa system. It uh, doesn't look like uh, that's going to go very far in the near future. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Uh, when we come back, we're going to start looking for the earnings next week because uh, it really starts to uh, heat up the summer. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we're back. I uh, wanted to get into earnings. And of course, uh, we said JP Morgan, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, PNC Bank. So the financials starting on Friday. Now, when we get into uh, next week, that's when things are going to start heating up. On Monday after the bell, uh, Netflix and Select Comfort. Uh, on Tuesday, we've got Bank of America and Goldman Sachs, Johnson & Johnson, United Health, Lockheed Martin, Harley Davidson, IBM. United Continental and CSX. We get into Wednesday, Morgan Stanley, uh, Textron, Qualcomm, American Express, Alcoa, United Rentals. Thursday is a big day. Abbott Labs, Nucor, BB&T, Checkpoint, Philip Morris, Snap-on, Union Pacific, Genuine Parts Company, Polaris, Microsoft, Visa, Skyworks Solutions, Intuitive Surgical, eBay, Capital One, Athena, and SAP. We get into Friday, wrapping up that week. General Electric, Schlumberger, Honeywell, and Huntington Bank shares. So uh, a pretty big week next week. And the question is, do we just kind of slowly melt up into that uh, going into earnings? And I think the answer is, it looks like this uh, 2433 looks like it pretty extreme resistance levels in the S&P cash. Now, if you look at the earnings and the analyst calls on a lot of these, they've been slowly moving down the numbers. So it's not like uh, whatever the numbers were before. Uh, they've been doing this about the last three quarters. And that is uh, they jacked the, uh, they jacked the, the, the earnings uh, forecasts up. Uh, right after the announcement, and then they start moving them down. And by the time it gets about uh, four weeks away, um, they're significantly lower than they were before. But of course, uh, this is all about trying to get other people to buy their shares of whatever stock. Um, that's the game on Wall Street. That is to make it look good and then make it look better by dropping those. Just take that limbo or the high jump bar and move it down a couple of rungs 
uh, and let them hop over it. So normally these things have been moved down. Now the big thing is, especially the big exporters, uh, are they going to be able to go and say, okay, we got saved, our bacon got saved by the dollar collapsing here over the last uh, few months. Um, that'd be about it. If you don't have big exports, this is probably not going to be good for you. So look for big uh, international exporters uh, that um, probably, you know, anything that's selling big dollar stuff going across the seas, probably going to do okay. I'm just wondering how well a lot of these other mid-sized companies and smaller companies are going to do because they certainly look like they've been well advanced of their earnings curve. So we'll look at it. Now, uh, anything below a close of 24.25 today would probably be rather significant. Same thing, any close above 24.35 would be significant to the upside. So we're probably going to have a day out here with light volume. And the question is, even with incredibly light volume, can they push this market higher? And uh, right now you'd have to say, and it looks awful close uh, that they can. And the thing would be, though, is if we don't get a pullback, my guess is there isn't much to the upside until those earnings start rolling through. So not a lot happening out there, at least uh, in that. Okay. So we do have a email. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And there was a Jefferies analyst out today uh, saying Intel was facing a major, a major threat from parallel processing. Uh, let's take a quick look at Intel. Um, and the, I guess what they're really saying is that uh, NVIDIA and machine learning is a big deal. And Intel's really not cashed in on that. So what are we looking at? Well, Intel has a couple of things. I think the Jeffries guy uh, is soft in the head if he doesn't think that the real threat to everybody is Intel's new memory standard. If they get that thing going, they will literally own everything. I think it's one of the single biggest things in the world that they have going for them. But let's get back to the, uh, the Jeffries analyst. Uh, if you use a regular processor, uh, it may have four cores or eight cores. Um, and be able to really execute individual threads of a program, maybe six or eight or, at a time or four. Um, some of the computers I have, maybe two, uh, and some people probably even one. Um, but, you know, do you have a big expensive processor in your machine? If the answer is everything has to go through those four processors that are basically four processors in that single chip, uh, then that's the most you can do. It's like a four-lane highway. Uh, but that four-lane highway can do a lot of stuff. Uh, Intel processors have lots of instructions and a lot of things can, that can be done and done very well. Um, it has. It is a general process, uh, let me put it, a general purpose processor. Uh, when they started using uh, NVIDIA chips, the graphics chips for scientific learning, uh, like machine learning and, and compressing video and that kind of stuff, the thing that you had was maybe 500 cores, but they didn't do a lot. Think of a 500 uh, um, desk or handheld calculators, maybe that. That would be a better way to look at it. They can do a handful of things uh, mathematically, but that's about it. They don't do much else. They work very well on, uh, on uh, triangular uh, relationships uh, like animation, where you're basically giving points, three points in space. Um, so especially machine learning, uh, animation, compression for video, you can use these for a lot of stuff. And that's why NVIDIA went to the roof is they kind of were sitting in the cat's bird seat when that whole machine learning thing took off. Now the question is, for me, is Intel's got their device, uh, Google's got their device, uh, Amazon's got a, a device that they're working on, and these are all called uh, TSUs, Tensor Processing, or TPUs, Tensor Processing Units. So my thought would be in, uh, NVIDIA could sell just as many or more next year and do half the amount of 
dollar business once all these other companies start flooding the market with their devices that don't do any video, because you can forget all about that, but literally just do processing internally and you don't need the big video card. You can remove a huge amount of cost on it. Intel, it's memory. The big thing in these tensor processing units is the memory speed. And of course, anybody can buy those from uh, those new uh, units from uh, Micron and or Intel. But NVIDIA is going to be on the outside of that. And when you're talking about memory being a thousand times faster from Intel and Micron, it is a huge order of magnitude uh, deal breaker that uh, Intel or Micron still may be using DDR5 memory. So this summer, does it kind of look that way? I think. But by the time we get to September or October, I think we're going to have a whole bunch of companies making these TPUs that will replace NVIDIA cards. And there's going to be a lot of comp uh, competition and prices are going to probably drop in half for, at, for the same amount of capability. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Trading is different than investing, but the opportunity to take advantage of short-term trends is only one if you get the direction right. Direction leveraged and inverse ETFs offer bold trades on U.S. and international stocks and bonds. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And just as a reminder, I don't think we've been started running the ads yet, but I'll be doing a, uh, a presentation on the 19th uh, to my subscribers for the daily and the uh, Tech Insider uh, newsletters. So uh, 
it'll all be about machine learning. So you might get a little bit more out of this. But uh, I've been working pretty much every weekend, vacation, nights, weekends, anytime I can working on machine learning uh, for trading. And that may be something that we uh, roll out in August, uh, depending on uh, how quick, how much time I can put in. Uh, but on the 19th, we're going to do that presentation on everything you need to know about machine learning for investing in it. And that would be kind of this along this line of the question I have right now, which is, of course, what does this really mean? To, is there a threat from Intel uh, into parallel processing? And I think the answer is... Um, I'd be more worried if I was NVIDIA than anything else. Um, Microsoft and Intel uh, have a partnership that goes back a long time. Some people have called it Wintel for forever. And my guess is if, uh, uh, if Microsoft has some software, it will probably work with whatever Intel comes out. And if you build that into Windows... Uh, it makes a huge, uh, a huge platform to launch maybe your machine learning stuff off on a lot of machines. So there's a lot of moving pieces going on, and that's why we're going to kind of do this presentation on uh, the 19th. And uh, it probably, it'll probably be good for about three months. So <laughs> yeah, things are moving quickly, as quickly as they were in the 80s, for what I think is the biggest thing in computer software for the next 10 years. So uh, I think everybody will either want to uh, uh, to uh, maybe get a 30-day trial and take a look at that, and then uh, maybe even go a little longer after the trial because we'll be talking about rolling out machine learning solutions for trading and why they are so much better uh, than uh, what is currently available. So anyway, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Um, and we're at 24, 29 and, and nine tenths, like gasoline, 24, 29 and nine tenths, um, up uh, 470 volume, 1.8 billion shares. It's not going to be a big day, um, but, uh, not a lot of clues as to whether we're going to close at 24, uh, 35 or 24, 25. Both of those would be a fairly decent indication going in. My suspicion would be if we're going to sell off, it's going to be in the next few days before the earnings cycle, uh, not after. So uh, I'm hoping that we get that uh, a little bit of air underneath my wings on the short positions I have uh, so that I can hold through earnings season. If they hold these up, I'll probably have to wait until after earnings uh, to see whether or not there are any good positions to short. But I need a little bit of breathing room going into these. And uh, maybe we'll get it here in the next day or so. Certainly there's no energy or no volume. As we said before, if you just looked at the dollar amounts from Thursday to Friday, um, the dollar amount was uh, was uh, was uh, almost almost 40% off on Friday from Thursday. So there wasn't a lot of juice pumping up here. And my guess is we're going to see some kind of volume, uh, overall dollar volume that we saw on Friday uh, coming in today. There certainly doesn't look to be any kind of juice uh, and uh, that stuff. Watched Tesla this morning. I thought that looked interesting. It looked like a bear trap for me uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, they really pushed it down really quickly and then it popped back up. For the most part, we're not talking about uh, writing home to anybody. Things still off 50 cents on the day, but was down nine bucks lower than it was, and it was up five bucks higher than it was right now at uh, uh, 312. But it's not uncommon to see these highly short stocks as the market starts to pull back down, have some pretty wild gyrations. We've got our second doji out here, possibly. Friday was uh, the first one, today's the second one. Um, and again, you got a 30% short interest on this. Uh, Mr. Musk was once again out there parading uh, the first car that came off the assembly line today. And that may have been enough to solve this, along with the market being slightly higher as we speak. Uh, but, uh, man, I, you know, I would love for this thing to race up, wash out as many shorts as possible, get an opportunity on it long term. I think this is headed back to 40 uh, when all the other companies make electric cars, 
And of course, probably if uh, the lessons of any kind of technology are out there, uh, pilgrims take the arrows. And my guess is that uh, Tesla is going to look like a dartboard in a couple of years. Uh, what else do we have going on here? We're talking about uh, JP Morgan. I think we were. Let's take a look at that since they got earnings coming out in a week. As I said, uh, didn't see a lot in these, and especially the lighter volume. You wanted 24.5 million shares from the March 1st high at 93.48. Uh, JP Morgan three days ago went into that with 16 million. Let's call it 16.5 million shares. 12.8 uh, million shares on Friday today, about 8.9. So we're a little lower out here into these financials, and they're all going into earnings. Uh, energy coming off the low is not all that bad. It's just the energy up here last few days that has been fairly light. I um, wanted to see how some of these other companies were bearing today. If we're going higher, then the car auction services are probably going to go higher, too. And this is one makes me think that maybe we've got a, a little bit of a pullback in the economy coming. The April 6th low for KAR was $41.25 with 1.8 million shares. Basically, we've been going into that with 800, 900, uh, what do we got, 900,000 shares today. We've broken below it. We need to close back above 41.25, but that would say that we've got um, maybe more car repossessions coming in the near future, which wouldn't surprise me with a lot of those seven-year loans uh, and some of the other uh, stuff that had been going on. Uh, JetBlue, another one I wanted to see how it was doing out here today, uh, going up against its previous high back on January 11th with almost 11 million shares at $23.15. Um, so, you know, you got your 10.8 million shares, uh, 4.2 million shares on Friday today, just 2 million shares. Uh, but it did spike and make a new high. It's going to close back into that trading range now. Uh, there were a few others on my list out here that I was thinking about. Uh, da, 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 which one is it out here? Yeah. Take a quick look at CSX. I know some of those other ones out here are uh, out. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So CSX slowly been making highs. Take a little closer look at this thing out here. Well, you had, what, 5 million shares. You got into it with 8 million shares. This one actually looks pretty good. And I would suspect that any of these uh, rail companies are probably going to look good as long as more of those shales uh, areas continue to open up. Uh, that all still has to, or I guess the majority of that stuff still has to be taken out by rail. So pipelines will get a uh, bigger share in the near future. Um, we'll look at this more when we come back. Give me a call, 877-927-6638. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. 
Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. John Logan has been hard at work making the Taz Profile Scanner Plus the best it can be, and he'll be hosting a special hour-long webinar for all Taz Profile Scanner Plus subscribers this Wednesday, July 12th from 5 till 6 p.m. Eastern. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to this amazing piece of software. See for yourself how it tracks 5,000 financial instruments in real time, over 17 different stock exchanges, U.S. futures, and currencies. This piece of software will change the way you trade, and it can be used with any trading methodology. The combination of price and volume is what makes market profile-based analysis so unique. We've opened up a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus, even if you've had a trial before. So now is a great time to sign up. You also gain access to John's July 12th webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile Unique. Sign up for your free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right now on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And uh, we're 24.30, kind of just stuck here. Volume uh, still under 1.9 billion shares on the day. Um, so not much going on in that one. We're going to look at a few of these other ones out here. Uh, they're going into earnings and start looking at. Okay, since Monday is Netflix, let's take a quick look at that. NFLX. And, uh, you know, I discontinued Netflix at the beginning of the year, really don't miss it. Uh, my thought was that I can have it for about six months a year and maybe watch it when they get new stuff, but they haven't been getting anything that I liked in a while. So I just hadn't been watching it. I just turned it off. At the beginning of the year, really don't think that there's much that I missed. And I get the free stuff, a eh, few things I want to watch on Amazon. But uh, I don't know, it just doesn't seem a whole lot. Netflix ha had this big gap up, a sign of strength, goes back to the 25th of April, did so on 20.6 million shares to the upside. It had a nice test back here on July 6th with 5.5 million shares. It's gone up the last two days, nice little volume out here. Um, don't expect this thing to run that much into earnings. Energy from June 15th up to June 26th and back down to that July 6th low was about the same. So there's not a lot to read in here other than the fact that support comes in at 144.25. Can this kind of just bounce up or even move up slightly into earnings? That's probably the more probable cause. Um, could you get to 159? Could be. But again, not a lot of juice so far. We'll see how the end of the day comes in. Okay. Well, apparently my engineer wasn't checking his IMs because I told him at the very beginning of the conversation that uh, Yahoo IMs doesn't work. Hopefully he's listening. So maybe he can tell me who's on the line. We'll wait for that. Or just put him on the line, I guess. But uh, I can't do it because... Uh, Yahoo IM stinks, and it works about half the time. Okay. Ari from Arcadia. Go ahead, Ari. How are you doing? Very good. What do you want to talk hey. about today? About Intel, but not necessarily the graph. Hey, Intel always had monster processors for a long time, but now... Uh -huh. Now in the media, they're pushing like NVIDIA is having all these 45 processes on a chip that can do parallel processing. Right. We talked about that. And it seems to me that the Intel chips, the i9 cores, you know, some of them can do 12, but they're full computers. They're not, they're right. not just. Right. What, what, what you're talking about, NVIDIA makes graphics cards. And graphics basically has a very finite set of things you need to do, which is add or multiply or divide a couple of numbers. 
And so you can have, I've got a card in uh, one of my machines here that has uh, 650 CUDA cores in it. So, and actually I bought two cards, so I've got you know, 1,300 cores in there. So anyway, that means that you can do a lot of things in parallel, especially in machine learning. Now, Intel bought Altera last year. And one of the reasons they did that is to put that kind of technology, uh, programmable logic in the chip itself. So to, to some extent, you can take and do in the processor things that you probably couldn't have done before. And since it never leaves the processor, uh, you can do them very quickly, like video compression and that kind of stuff. So there is part of that. But the better part of what I'm talking about is Intel coming out with a card that's as half as cheap for the same processing power as an NVIDIA, although it doesn't do any graphics. Does that make sense? Well, I, so they're coming up with a thing that's not a full processor, but it's going to specialize in, in certain aspects? Yeah. Um, hang on a second. I was going to do this in my seminar, but if you think about a Rubik's Cube, I'm holding one up here if you're watching on Tiger's TV, a lot of what you do in machine learning is data, and that data is kind of set up like a Rubik's Cube, uh, and, you know, you'll have, you know, maybe three by three, so you've got nine on a face, and then it's three deep, so you've got a bunch of different little cubby holes where you put your data in it, and a lot of times it's uh, what they call just a... Uh, a uh, vector and just a single number. Sometimes it, it is a, a scale. I mean, excuse me, a scalar. Sometimes it's a vector. A vector is that with uh, maybe some energy. It's kind of like saying the wind is blowing 10 miles an hour, but it's blowing out of the south, right? One is just a number. One gives you some direction, uh, and then you can go into a third. Uh, a third. Uh, I'm going to say that a third dimension. And then maybe a fourth and a fifth and a sixth. And so you can stack all the data up. It starts actually looking very much like a Rubik's Cube. Um, and there's two things that what they, what they found out is a guy that was working at NVIDIA in 2010 uh, as an intern decided to write a math library so he could do really fast math. And that kind of grew into this library that now is used by most of the machine learning software. It's called CUDA if you look it up on, uh, uh, if you just Google NVIDIA CUDA, you'll see the libraries and all the stuff you install. But the question is, do you need all that video hardware to go along, uh, especially if you're in some kind of cloud server? And the answer is no. So the only thing you're really selling then is a processor and some memory tied to it. There's not a lot of magic in it. Uh, Intel makes uh, a ton of video cards already. So they already have the technology and, and the know-how to actually build it. So the question would be, what, is there a barrier to entry from NVIDIA? And the answer is no. Uh, Google's already making their own because the, it's, the cards that NVIDIA makes put off a lot of heat, suck a lot of power. And if you're running these big things 24 hours a day in a cloud service, your number one expense is electricity. It's not the cost of the hardware. So anytime you can maybe get the heat down and the power draw down, that's really what uh, Amazon and Google Web Services and Azure from Microsoft and Salesforce, uh, 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 Einstein and IBM's offering, everybody wants to get that down because that's actually when you start putting racks and racks and racks of this stuff together. That's what they want. So the thing that NVIDIA did basically was build these things. Intel builds some of that stuff into the processors themselves. So all they have to do is build a bigger, faster one and cut the cost a great deal because there's no video coming out of it, especially to the server business. So my thought is NVIDIA has a huge uh, weakness, and that is companies like uh, AMD and uh, Intel making uh, dis, uh, machine learning processing uh, type cards that don't have any video out. Now, NVIDIA is going to do the same thing, and they've been working on theirs. But 
basically what you had was a solution to a problem that was very expensive and it's going to that is going to come down dramatically over the next year so what's that going to do to nvidia if you hang on we'll uh, i'll see if i can't ask you some more questions terry we'll be back in a minute Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, is Ari still on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, did Dan answer your question? Yes, I like to ask a little bit. You know, to me, the, it seems to me like our modern world runs on Intel, mm -hmm. and it, and it seems to me like the financial media is kind of making like AMD and Nvidia coming up with this new magic, and that Intel is not in that in that world. I just, well. I, I, yeah, but, of course, most of these people are not tech-savvy to begin with, though. They just tell, you know, they just they just spit out whatever someone told them or an article they read. I don't think any of these, especially the people you see on TV, they're not a lot of deep thinkers in that bunch. Um, they certainly aren't thinking a step ahead. And I'm just saying that a lot of companies just kind of luck out 
and and run and run into a business that they never really ever thought that they were going to have. It wasn't like they set out to have all this machine learning business at Nvidia. Uh, you know, they had this guy. He wrote this library. It just kind of happened to work that out that someone else writing something else in machine learning started using that library, and suddenly everybody wanted the most expensive cards that Nvidia had. Well. That's great for a little while, but you're making that much money, you're going to start having a lot of competition, and that's what NVIDIA has not had. Uh, AMD doesn't have any libraries for sh machine learning, so anything they're doing has to do only with games, right, or just regular video stuff. So you got to figure AMD is probably going to come on with some of that stuff. you got Intel um, doing their stuff. Uh, Google makes their own cards already to go into their own servers to some extent. Um, and then you're probably going to see Amazon Web Services um, probably saddle up to somebody like Intel, and they're going to make a lot of cheap uh, tensor processing units uh, for these cards. So I'm thinking that, you know, that uh, NVIDIA had a real good ride, but it's going to run into a lot of competition over the next year. And everybody that discounts Intel does so at their apparel, because uh, when these guys get together and they work out uh, their new memory cards with these tensor processing units, I think they have something that literally would be unbeatable. But Intel's been kind of slow at rolling this stuff out. Um, they want to get huge amounts of money for it. And at this point, no one's willing to throw huge amounts of money at this thing. They need to take a little less and uh, get the pumped primed. And uh, that's what they haven't done yet with this new memory technology and their tensor processing units. But uh, by all account, the stuff's supposed to hit around September from several different companies. And my guess is that's when you're going to start seeing it. But the huge business for all these companies is going to be these cloud services businesses. And that's going to mean putting it in a rack somewhere where no one ever sees it, and there's going to be no video coming out of this thing. It's only going to be used uh, for processing uh, machine learning. And that means you can cut a lot of things off that card and drop the, uh, I bought two cards, they were what, 650 bucks a piece. Um, for the part I needed on them, probably could have bought them for 200 bucks a piece. But no one's got anything yet. But this fall, I'll probably be replacing those things with uh, $200 cards, my guess. Maybe 250. So you can get rid of a lot of that. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. thanks for the call. Thanks, for the call. Remember, I'm going to be doing a special on this uh, special presentation on machine learning on the 19th and how all these different companies uh, come together, like Intel and machine learning, uh, AMD and NVIDIA and IBM and Salesforce, Google. They're all in it. They're all thick as thieves. See you tomorrow. Stay back then. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.